Well, I'm over at Ethan's studio, and he asked me to come over and look at this new project he's been working on. Let's take a look at this. Ethan, what have you been working on? Hey, uh, a lot of things, but um, we've been working sort of together before even we knew each other when I was reading your uh, APUG articles about um, the reversal process for making direct uh, paper negatives. And I've seen some work by Brandon Barry and a couple like little quick YouTube videos on direct positive color paper negatives. Oh. If color paper yeah. pictures um, and so I, I think I've, I've figured that out pretty to, to a usable state and uh, today we'll make some videos for both of our channels uh, on how to do that and, and sort of how far I've gotten yeah. and what what my um, you know future uh, things that I'd like to figure out are these are some of my tests I have not made like a real good binder of it these are um, kind of where I got to, um, although I started uh, about here, you know, um, these are unfiltered tests that I made originally in my studio, and, and I've got this stack of, you know, 10 pictures that took me to get here, which is a color balance and an exposure that I really like. Yeah. Um, these are me and Laura. I made Laura take a picture of me when she wow. was done being photographed. Those are actually pretty nice. Yeah, I just shot these like on my product setup that were in here. There's not, they're just tests. But, um, you know, I think we got pretty good colors on this. It's certainly not, um, you know, a linear uh, color scale. Like this is a gray shirt. Uh, but I've been able to get really good uh, skin tones and colors. Um, and, you know, this is a little blue from mixed lighting. I don't have the best flash setup. But um, then I've tried a bunch outdoors. Um, Here's some outdoor pics. I think Dennis took this picture of me. Um, outdoors is kind of hard because the color of the light changes, not only, um, you know, like like the amount of light, but it might get bluer or uh, more ultraviolet on certain days and certain times. And I find that affects the filtration as well. So um, I'm still sort of perfecting outdoors uh, without having to just sort of guess and check until we get to the right exposure. But indoors, I think I, I've got it, and I'm really excited about making some bigger cameras to uh, shoot some really big direct positives in, in color. Okay, so we're going to move my studio around to shoot a couple more studio strobe pictures, and then we'll show you the process. So this is my Cameradactyl OG, it's a 4x5 handheld camera, but you don't have to use a handheld, better in the studio on a tripod. Um, and then this is the Cameradactyl Pro Filter Mount, now available at Cameradactyl.com for $17.95. But it's an op open source design and you can uh, make your own. Um, this is for filtration um, for the process, so um, RA4 paper is roughly um, like tungsten shifted and so everything is super blue and so you need a mask to compensate for um, the orange mask built into the negative and then also the difference in in color so um, we can go over filters later and how I um, build the filter packs but basically it's uh, for me right now kind of a guess and check method I think I could probably do a little bit of work with like a color meter uh, or a color strobe meter or something like that and figure it out a little bit more Precisely, but um, for now, you know, I'll use two red filters and a yellow filter and continue. I bought this Fuji Crystal Archive. Yes. So any RA4 paper will do, I think. Um, but it's 8x10, and I need to fit it in these 4x5 sh sheet film holders. So what I've done is taped stops for 5 inches and 4 inches, or actually whatever uh, nominal yeah. thing fits. Um, yeah, so first I will, in the total darkness, you can't see this, take a sheet out, put it over here, cut it, and then take those, turn them, and yes. I'll cut them like this. Right. Anyway. And without cutting your fingers off. Uh, I try. <laughs> I haven't gotten myself yet. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, 
Do you want me to look moody but pensive? Yes, moody and pensive. But also back up against the wall where you were. <laughs> okay. And what we're doing is trying to do color reversal print processing. And what this is, we're using RA4 color paper. This is Fuji Crystal Archive paper. This is the kind of paper if you go to your neighborhood mini lab like Walgreens or whatever, Costco, and you get little 4x6 prints done, photographic prints, that's the kind of paper, right? He buys a pack of 8x10 sheets for under $40, am I correct? Yeah. The paper itself is cheaper than black and white. By a little, yeah. But maybe a little bit black and white silver gelatin print paper. So what we're doing is loading the paper in the camera, uh, making an in-camera exposure, and then reversal processing it to have a one-of-a-kind color picture, which is a really cool idea. It's kind of like, I guess conceptually, it's very much like a wet Polaroid, right? That's, that's yeah. kind of like, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the end result is a paper uh, color print, but it was exposed in camera, processed by hand, right? Uh, the color balancing part of it, like filtration, that is interesting. There's a lot more of that involved in this process. Okay, so the first chemical is Dectol. It's diluted two to one, standard, regular Dectol mixture from the package from Kodak. This is a black and white developer, and this is going to react with all of the uh, negative information that has been shot onto the piece of paper. So then what we'll have at this point is a black and white negative. Then we're going to stop the development process so that anything that's been hit with a photon um, and anything that isn't cannot develop anymore. This is just your regular stop bath diluted for prints. Um, keep it in a vinegar bottle because whatever. Um, here we're going to do a rinse bath. And basically this is going to uh, just get some of the acid off of the print before I stick it in the color developer so we don't uh, kill the color developer. Okay, so then I've got the regular RA4 process which is color developer and then Blix. Um, let's see what we got here. Um, basically, at this point, once the image is stopped um, in the stop bath or the rinse. in the, the rinse, I'm going to turn the lights on and fog it, right? So that way, now everything is exposed. Should be a total black picture, except that the already exposed in the negative version of the image has already been developed by Dectol. And then when I put it in the Blix, which is the next chemical, which is bleach and fixer. Um, it will bleach out the black and white negative from the process, leaving us with a, only a color positive. Um, and it'll get a little bit lighter and more contrasty. How long does these two chemicals last? Um, well, is have, it equivalent to black and white? Uh, no, these go a little bit quicker and they're more temperature dependent. Um, I've been working on the process at room temperature in trays. Um, you might get a little bit better color fidelity at like 98 degrees or 102 mm -hmm. degrees, whatever it's um, right. supposed to be for. But, you know, we will see. This is my first bunch of batches of this, and so maybe we'll start to see color degradation already. Um, the Dectol will probably last forever. The stop bath is free. Mm -hmm. These two chemicals are not super expensive, mm -hmm. but they, um, they will go. Okay. okay. So. So now it's in the stop bath. You know, it's basically... So, so it looks like a black and white negative, paper yeah. negative. Right. And it looks like we have some detail on the face. Yeah, this actually, they should be a little bit thinner in this process than um, a black and white paper negative. Oh, interesting. Um, I think that actually looks pretty good to me. Although maybe I did not do such a good job of focusing or you moved. We'll see. Um, well, it was a strobe. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I could have moved back though. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I could also do a better job of cutting the modeling lights. But okay, so really this does not have to sit in the stop bath for very long. All it's doing is stopping the developer. And if this is not just getting darker and darker from being in the light, right. that stop bath has already done its yeah. job. So a pH change. Yeah. Uh, 10 seconds in the stop bath, then I turn yeah. the lights on. Probably need less than that. And so now I'm rinsing it off just to keep the stop bath out of the color developer. One other key thing that's going on here is that we've got the lights on, right? So now every 
every silver halide on this piece of paper is exposed, right? right? But only the ones that were exposed during the exposure are developed in Dectol, right? Which will prevent them from developing in the color developer. And so then that's how we're gonna see um, a color positive come up. Right, let's see. So it actually takes a little bit to get started. Yep. Yeah, so the reason why I've been doing it at room temperature first is one, I could get away with it, and yeah. two, that would just make the process much easier yeah. for me. And so I figured I would go to, you know, um, temperature control right. later if I had to, but see if I yeah. could get away Realistically, with it. Realistically, if you're trying to do it out on the street, you're going to have to deal with it in whatever ambient temperature there is, anyways. Maybe a summertime process, uh -huh. right? Yeah. When it's 95 degrees out, it might make a great process at that point. Oh, yeah, look at that. So that's interesting. Starting to see a faint color image coming up. So it actually is looking to me like the color developer is a little tired, right? Because this oh, isn't yeah. going totally black. Yes. And so let's, I'm gonna give it a, a little while longer to, um, you know, kind of go until these black borders are as black as they're gonna get. Um, but I actually don't dislike this exposure. I think it's it's going to get lighter in the blicks because it's going to remove the black and white negative mm -hmm. layer. And so the tank processing specs on this are that um, it should go three, three and a half minutes. Although, you know, to completion, I think a lot of times you can judge by eye. And so right. I don't think you actually have to go that long. But maybe as the developer gets older, you'll have to go a little longer. Right. We'll, we'll see. You know, I'm still testing. Is it sharp? Yeah, you're sharp. You did not move. I kind of feel sharp. <laughs> yeah. And this is the bleach and fix, I guess. Yeah, and so what this is going to do is, or if it's working, it should uh, remove the black and white negative from it. So like a lot of the highlights will get lighter and whiter. Um, yeah, this is another... I don't know, recommended time is a minute and a half. I usually give it that long. Yeah. I got that much time to spare. So for the average black and white darken worker, how much extra you know, equipment cost and time and energy do you think is, this is gonna require? Um, not really much extra. Right. Yeah, I mean, you've gotta buy different paper, which is a little bit cheaper. Actually, Fuji Crystal Archive is really cheap, but any RA4 color photo paper I think would work. And then, you know, you can get a developer and Blix kit from all sorts of places. Um, and you don't have to buy peroxide. You do not. Yeah, it's this is a little bit easier of a process, I think, than the black and white uh, reversal. And I think it's actually a little bit more tolerant in terms of exposure. But it has its, you know, quirks and foibles, for sure. Yeah. So this is still, like, a little yellow because uh, of the bleach on it. But. Oh yeah, look at that guy, wow. Yeah, so I, I would say this is still a little yellow in this chemistry for me, so I might remove one yellow from the, the filter, pack. filter pack. Yeah, and then I think the exposure is pretty good. I might go a little lighter, but we'll see how much yellow I remove from the filter pack that usually affects the exposure. Very cool. Yeah. So there's one flaw with this printing process that I have not yet figured out. I don't know if you can spot it there's a granularity to it yes exactly um, th yeah. it's good so I am not sure I've done a bunch of tests so far um, trying to remove that that sort of pattern particularly for larger format processes um, this is already at a point where I would be really happy to use it but for smaller stuff I think that pattern is kind of bothersome and I'd like to figure out a way to get rid of it yeah we'll see maybe other people on the internet will figure it out and so you know instead of changing the color on let's say my enlarger over here in the dichroic head um i just changed the color through mm -hmm. these packs yeah. and so i'm removing some you know orange uh yellow filters again my camerodactyl uh pro filter holder available at camerodactyl.com for 17.95 um, is super good design. It will revolutionize the way you use filters. <laughs> yes. Coming to the camera. Coming to you on the store. internet near you. Yes.
So I like that exposure. Um, Joe, are you ready? Yes. Oops. Camerodactyl Pro is a highly adjustable filter mount. <laughs> There's so little information about this on the internet that... Um, about how very, RA4 works? Or, you know, or, I mean, how photochemistry works oh, in yeah. general, but like this process in particular, maybe yeah. there's like 10 people who've made posts about it. Maybe thousands of people did it back in the day. I, I don't know, but um, yeah, there's no like Kodak publication on how to do this, which uh, is yeah. where APUG comes in handy. Yeah. Or Fotrio, whatever. Fotrio now. It's already looking a little bluer. Oh yes. Well, that's starting to look uh, a little more neutral on the background. Yeah. So okay. you took out a yellow filter out of the pack? Yeah, I think a pair of yellow filters. Of them, yeah. Um, yeah, that's I like that a lot better. Also, I might want to switch this color developer. It seems like before it was coming up uh, to black much quicker. Uh, in fact, just dump some in there, right? Well, so I've tried dumping it. I'm gonna try with a roughly clean tray. <laughs> You're not gonna do the Joe Van Cleave, just splash a little fresh in there? Yeah, let's see, because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't wanna contaminate the old, Flix. the new with the old. Huh? Uh, for developer, yeah. let's see, we're uh, improv in here. Yep, that's what it's all about, darkroom work. <laughs> improv. Yeah, it is. It's all improv. For Especially me. this experimental process, right? Of yeah. Reversal processing RA4 paper. Yeah. Let's see if these blacks will quickly get a little bit blacker. You can tell, like, the highlights on your cheeks and in the background look really gray. Yeah. Um, we have not solved the reticulation problem or okay. whatever that problem yeah. is, the grain problem. And it's so we know it's not the blicks mm -hmm. because we haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I can see it in the black and white negative, so it's. Oh, okay. It is a problem with in the. The, the reaction of Dectol and, Dectol. and the color emulsion. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a different dilution of Dectol would be better. I don't, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Or even a pre soak in water, maybe? Maybe. Your, your guess is probably better than mine. I really wish I knew more photochemists. Or maybe they just didn't engineer this paper to do this. <laughs> I mean, certainly they did not, but um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's the reason or it's something that I'm, you know, missing. Okay, so here's two pictures uh, we took. Um, the first one is in an old uh, color developer. Joe, you had been asking me, um, you know, what the, what the lifespan of those chemicals are. And I guess the lifespan is maybe 20 or 30 prints over the course of a week. I don't know if it's exhausted from actually really acting with the paper or just oxidizing over the course of being open in my shop. Um, and then this one is with new color developer. I really like this. Um, one of the things that we might work on or might totally fail is that um, this type of print produces like a kind of a, looks like a grain pattern almost, or a reticulation pattern um, at a very small level. It's totally usable, particularly for larger prints, but, you know, if I could get it very clear and sharp for, you know, scans, that might be nice too. Um, yeah, I think you can see it. Yeah. So it's, it's almost unnoticeable, right? But um, I like to inspect things with my face like there. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it looks to me kind of like just a grain pattern that's really, really big grains, but I'm not 100% sure what that is or why that is, but right. um, it's something that I'd, I'd like to figure out in the future or uh, be told about by somebody who knows a little bit more about the process than I do. Yeah. Well, I think it's still exciting, though, that we're able to get a direct positive color print. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm I'm super jazzed about it. I'd yeah. like to finish some large eight by ten and, and oh, larger yeah. projects. I could see a, an ult, a ultra large format camera would be would be a, a great project for this. Yeah, I've been on eBay looking for twenty by twenty four lenses or larger. Um, hard to find. Hard to find. Expensive. If somebody's got a good deal on one, let me know. Cameradactyl.com. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think um, large uh, color color positives would be great. Yeah. You know. Well, Ethan, I was really excited to see the new color process that you've been developing, and it's uh, no pun intended, but uh, uh, it's really cool. It really Thanks. is. I think 
from what you've shown us, I think the average home darkroom person could do this. Yeah. I'm sure. going to do it. For sure. I'm excited about the cost of the paper seems to be very on par or even cheaper than silver gelatin black and white paper. Mm -hmm. The chemicals are readily available. Um, the requirements of handling and in pitch darkness is really only during the cutting of the paper if you want to cut it down and if you have a developing tank just loading it into the tank from there you're pretty well set right yeah I was gonna say like the Stearman press tanks or yeah uh, you don't even need a dark room to do it you right. just need to cut your film down I would just use a cardboard box in a big uh, dark bag stick your arms in make your cuts and, yeah um, it's yeah. real exciting and uh, of course a lot of other things to tinker with, like filtration, getting the color balance mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. uh, shooting it out in daylight, mm -hmm. uh, taking portraits, and this opens up the possibility for like an Afghan box camera project that produces color pictures. Yeah, well, is this uh, is this a teaser for your this next project? This might be Jeff? a teaser. Well, it'll take me a while to get my my process slowed down, especially like the color filtration and all that. And, you know, but yeah, and also the winter months are coming up, so keeping the chemicals at the right temperature. Mm -hmm. People like me that have a garage-based yeah. darkroom, yeah. yeah, that's always a problem. So you have to microwave those chemicals. Yeah, studio strobes are helpful. Yeah, yeah, they are definitely, definitely. Well, it was great, Ethan, as always. Thank you for letting us come Thanks, into Joe. your studio and take time away from your busy schedule. I appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you coming. All right, thank well, you. Thank you. We'll see you later. Okay, guys, you know the drill. As always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye bye.